onto the field. A lot of rain here yesterday. Light showers today, but the field, of course, AstroTurf, it's in excellent shape. The Hawkeyes coming off that 53-10 win at Kinnick Stadium over Hawaii. The Cyclones recorded their 72nd season opening victory with a 42-13 win over Eastern Illinois last week. It will be the Hawkeyes to kick off. Jeff Skillett will put it in play, number 11. Back to receive. Lester Ridley and Lamont Hill, 23 and nine. And here we go. That is Lester Ridley at the 10, breaking through at the 15, the 20. Ridley gets to the 22-yard line. And Ridley is stopped by number 42, John Hartley. Hartley from a great football family out of Woodstock, Illinois. Here's the offense. Hughes with Schulte. Keller and Roberts, Patterson, Armbers, Pedersen, and there's the defense. For the Iowa Hawkeyes. Wise is a fine, fine man in that secondary. First down from the 22. A little delay and banging up the middle. They get it to the 25 yard line. Leroy Smith, number eight, making the stop. You'll notice Iowa State spreading that Hawkeye defense out a little bit right now. They're opening the game. You saw one back in the in the backfield. Look pass, look for draw. Second down and six. And the handoff going to Patterson. Patterson doesn't get much. Sundiata, the junior out of Detroit, Michigan. Four touchdowns last week, the fifth Cyclone to ever do it. One thing that the Iowa State Cyclones are going to do is run this pure triple option. There's the give to the fullback. Probably not the best call by Pedersen. He should have kept the ball in that particular case. Hughes goes out of the game and coming in. 24, Greg Jensik at the wide receiver spot. On third down and seven, the pass too high. It was intended for Lamont Hill. Brian Weiss, that talented, strong safety that I mentioned, had the coverage. And it's three and out for the Cyclones. Their punter is John Schnoor, the lefty from Altoona, Iowa. He'll be punting against a brisk wind of about 15 miles an hour. Number 81, Jeff Antula, is back to receive. He returned one punt last week against Hawaii for seven yards. The 39th meeting between these in-state rivals. Iowa leading 26 to 12. And Iowa, as you know, has won the last eight. The kick is away, almost blocked. Fair catch called for, and Tula takes it in at the 42-yard line. The Hawkeyes will have excellent field position. Let's check in with Ron Bonholt at the Iowa State sideline. Well, problem down there, Rod, with your microphone. We'll get that squared away. Matt Rogers leads Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes out. Hughes is split to the near side. First play, they give it to the second man through. And that's Mike Saunders blasting up the middle across the 50. Duprava made the tackle number 25. Here's the offense. Hughes, a very talented receiver. Up front, they have a good veteran line on defense. Dubrava, Radigan, Dunleavy, Fulton, Block, Milner, Grubb, Bugs, Rayberg, Nietzsche, and Walker. First down on that first play. 
as Saunders rambled up the middle. Coming in motion, Hughes, the pitch back. And back to the quarterback, the flea flicker downfield. Hughes, touchdown! Mark DeBrava beaten on the play, the flea flicker. As the ball went back to Rodgers, who threw to Hughes for the score. What we're trying to do, the Hawkeyes are getting done here, is a little flea flicker, as Jay said. It's the handoff to the running back, back to the quarterback, which holds the defense in position and gives Rodgers a great throw downfield and a superb catch. Superb catch. Hughes out of Newark, New Jersey. Great athlete. Skillet with the extra point. And the Hawkeyes have struck quickly. 12.56 remaining in the first quarter. And the gentlemen from Iowa City are up early, 7 to nothing. First quarter just underway, and the Iowa Hawkeyes out to a quick 7 nothing lead over the Iowa State Cyclones. And Keith, it took only two plays. 58 yards, the touchdown pass. Rodgers to Hughes for 47 yards. I think your real key here, too, Jay, is whoever masters the momentum early in the game could be the ultimate winner. And so far, that goes to the Iowa Hawkeyes. No question about it. Well, the early score helps to take the crowd out a little bit. Hayden Fry told us yesterday he was worried about the wind and the crowd. Of course, it can get a little noisy at Kinnick Stadium over in Iowa City, too. <laughs> All right, Skillet will put it in play again. The senior from Silvis, Illinois. And this time in the end zone, that's Ridley, and he'll down it. It'll come out to the 20-yard line where the Cyclones will begin play offensively for the second time. Last Saturday, the Cyclones winning 42-13. to At 42 points was the most points scored by an ISU squad since 88. The offense netted 438 yards on that day. The defense held Eastern Illinois scoreless till 29 seconds left in the third quarter. It didn't take long today for the Hawkeyes to strike. Hughes, Brandon Hughes, 81, comes to the near side. And they put Ben Harvey, Ben Harvey in the slot, number 80. And that's Schulte, the tight end, who went in motion to the right side in the slot. Now Hill goes to the far side. Lots of motion and formation here. Trouble for Peterson on the run. Peterson, first down. Good job by Peterson. He got a nice block over there from Lamont Hill. Peterson picking up the first down. He found everybody covered downfield, but got the job done. You'll see Iowa State spread the Hawkeyes out. He's looking for a receiver, but even though he sent everybody into the pattern, there's nobody available. He has no choice but to scramble. But because everybody's back with the defenders, there's a lot of open running space, and he's able to pick up the first down. Greg Jensik, number 24, comes in as a wide receiver. He's set in the slot to the right side. First and 10. The ball at the 36-yard line. That's Lamont Hill. Hill gets outside for a couple. Penalty marker down. First flag of the game. Scott Plate, number six, the cornerback, running the ball carrier out over on the far side. Jerry Hendrickson, the referee. Ed Hassel, the umpire. Tom Ransom, Roger Haber, John Everett, Richard Honig, and James Lepatina. The rest of the crew here. It's a big 10 crew. Indication is that this penalty will go against the Cyclones. We listen to Jerry Hendrickson. Give us the call. Holding it is. Oh, that's going to put the ball back at the 24-yard line. If you're just joining us, 12.42 to play. First quarter, 47-yard pass. Rodgers to Danon Hughes. Hawkeyes lead 7-0. First down and 30. Peterson has to hold on. Can't get anything going. Leading the way, Gator, 96. 
He's a senior out of Marion, Iowa, coming in from the tackle position. These defensive ends play a good bit like linebackers from time to time for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, they do, Jay. Oftentimes in passing situations, they will back off the line and have some responsibility for coverage in the patterns, picking up a back out of the, out of the backfield. They're playing real aggressive defense, though, and stuffing it in the middle. Iowa State's been trying to run the triple option a little bit, and that's one of the keys, the middle for the option. Second down and 26. Peterson running out of there. And Peterson wrapped up by Jeff Nelson, big number 93, at eight tackles last week against Hawaii. He's a junior out of Stillwater, Minnesota. Got a big sack early in the Hawaii game. There he is. Nelson, who goes 260. You know, an interesting thing, Jay, uh, Coach Walden said that that offensive line of the Iowa State Cyclones could be the biggest in the country in college football, averaging over 300 pounds. But right now, the Hawkeyes are putting it to them. Patterson goes out. Hughes comes back in. Third down and 23. Look out. And the Hawkeyes say they've got it. Trouble on the snap for Peterson. We'll wait till they unpile, but it appears that Iowa has come up with a football. It was Teddy Joe Fraley, number 49. Right there, you see the center just didn't get the ball up or the quarterback is pulling out. But either way, good fortune for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Last Saturday, they won 53 to 10 over at Kinnick Stadium. They led 41 to 3 at halftime. And the Cyclones have got to be careful they don't get blown out early here. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Play action. Here comes Rodgers. Throwing and incomplete at the one-yard line. That was a touchdown. He was trying to go down there to number 46, Matt Whitaker, the tight end. They are obviously spreading Iowa State thin. It's man-on-man -man coverage, and the receiver is open. There is no question about it. It just slips through his fingertips right there. And Arlen, if you give Rodgers that kind of time in rollout situations, he's going to pick you apart. He'll kill you. There's no question. He's one of the finest quarterbacks in the country. Ball spotted at the 23-yard line. Number 81, Jeff Antula coming into the game. And now a penalty. Penalty puts the ball at the 28. It'll be first and 15 back up at the 28-yard line. Going wide to the right is Antula, 81. Hughes to the near side. In motion, that's Montgomery, and the handoff to Saunders. And he takes it inside the 20. Mike Saunders, the senior out of Milton, Wisconsin, very dangerous running back. Matt Nitsche, 45, made the tackle. What I was really doing is playing good, straight-ahead football. Nothing fancy about this. It's just a dive right off a tackle, and the blockers, the up-front offensive line, and I'll tell you, the Hawkeyes have a good one, are opening some holes. John Falloon, the senior from Manson, Iowa, comes in number 82. It was his catch that put Iowa up 27-0 against Hawaii last week. Montgomery goes in motion. And it's Saunders, and he has racked up. Good, good surge that time by the Cyclones, leading the way. Milner, 58, and Grubb, 93. Spot the ball at about the 18-yard line. Defensively for Iowa State, you see that same dive except to the other side, but good containment on the outside by the Iowa State Cyclones, and that's what they need close in like this. Here's a big play early, third down and five. Hawks lead it, 7-0. And Tula back in for Falloon. And look out. What a play by Matt Grubb. Matt Grubb wrapping up Montgomery for the loss. 
And Rayberg, 95 also there. Rayberg really made the big play. The Cyclones needed that kind of play. The momentum has to switch for Iowa State to stay in the game. And these plays like that, where he just outmuscles his opponent and takes that ball carrier down in the backfield, can get a defense charged up. Jeff Skillett kicked a 30-yarder against Hawaii. He has made eight straight field goals. This a 41-yarder. Skillett's kick out of Hartleib's hold is good. And that's nine in a row for Jeff Skillett of the Hawkeyes. It's Iowa 10. The Cyclones nothing. We have 8.46 remaining to be played. First quarter here in Ames. about keeping the Hawkeyes out of the end zone on the Iowa State sideline, Rod Bothold. Rod? That's exactly right, Keith. If you're looking for a bright spot for Iowa State, that defensive stand was it. To fall behind 14-0, the emotion may have just steamrolled the Cyclones. They are back in this one, I think, if they can get some first downs. They don't want to lose that war of field position already, Keith. All right, and with the Iowa kickoff, here's Jay Randolph. And it'll be Skillet again. He's been busy in this early part of the game. Lamont Hill, 9, and Lester Ridley, 23, are back to return. Cyclones need something good to happen. And this kick will not be returned. Skillet with that big foot puts it out of the end zone. The scoring drive, five plays, 23 yards. Skillet's 41-yard field goal, his ninth in a row. The Cyclones will have their third opportunity to move the football from their own 20-yard line. Chris Peterson, the senior from Ankeny. 10 for 14, 270 yards in the opener. Hughes goes wide to the far side. Peterson giving to the second man through, breaks out of there. That's Sherman Williams. Williams, the junior from Omaha, Nebraska. First down. A very similar play to what Iowa had in the last series, just a straight dive, send the fullback in front of him for blocking, and he gets a nice hole. Offensive line's punching a little bit of hole there in the Hawkeye defense. There's Lamont Hill, number nine. The ball right at the 35-yard line. And the give to Patterson. Patterson. Teddy Joe Fraley, number 49, makes the tackle. The gain is up to 42-yard line. Now to John Campbell on the Iowa sideline. Thank you very much, Jay. A couple of former Hawkeyes watching this game up behind me. Nate Creer and fullback Owen Gill. Gill scored four touchdowns here in 1983. I talked to him after Iowa's first touchdown. He said, we're going to kill him. We'll wait and see. <laughs> yes, we will. Wait and see. And the give goes to Hill. Hill doesn't get much. Jeff Nelson, 93 again there, doing a good job from the right tackle position. Nelson, one of the outstanding defensive players for Hayden Fry. Ball spotted just over the 40-yard line, so a loss third and four coming up. No huddle offense here. Patterson and Hill with Peterson. Third down, four. Look out. Get that ball. It's going to belong to the Hawkeyes. It never went out of bounds over there. There's a case, Arlen, where that back over there, Hill should have made sure he batted that ball out of bounds. He's got to do that. He's either ha He has to go and do whatever he can to either fall on that ball or get it out of bounds so it doesn't go over to the opposing team. You see it right here. He gets hit quick. He doesn't have a time to really pitch it. That was their quick option. And obviously he should have got on the ball or knocked it out because now it's momentum for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They're close in. They're on the, about the 19 or 20 yard line. And that's where they're dangerous, Jay. And the terrible turnover gives the Hawkeyes, another opportunity here. Matt Rogers at the controls. The handoff going to Montgomery. Montgomery. 
Matt Nitsche, number 45, who had a great game at Nebraska last year, you may remember. Was supposed to have been redshirted and was needed in that game and played so well, he came up to make the tackle at the 15-yard line. They're rotating Filoon and Antula with the plays from Hayden Fry and his coaching staff. Going wide to the right, Danon Hughes. Filoon set to the left side. And coming back with the counter, Saunders. Saunders knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line. Boy, that's the way you run that counter tray right there. Excellent example of a misdirection. The counter, they go to the right and then comes back to the left. It gets the defense moving one way and obviously opens a big hole for the Hawkeyes. They're on the doorstep and they're ready to score again. And we've got Whitaker, the extra tight end, coming into the game. Double tight end arrangement. Allen Cross, the other tight end, 87, is in there. The handoff going to Kuyava. Touchdown. Paul Kuyava, the junior from Cudahy, Wisconsin, takes it in. And the Hawkeyes are rolling. They can't continue to give Iowa State's defense the ball so deep in their territory, Jay. If they do, it will be a long day for the Cyclones and a great day for the Hawkeyes. Well, it's been a long eight and a half minutes already for the Cyclones. Skillet kicks the extra point. It is 17 to nothing with 6.29 remaining in this first period of play. The Iowa Hawkeyes rolling over the Cyclones early. We have 6.29 remaining. And Coach Walden rightfully upset. This is the one thing he didn't want to have. His Cyclones have dug a huge hole for themselves here early. But let's give credit to the Hawkeyes have taken advantage of the breaks and looked extremely sharp here. The kickoff at the five-yard line taken by Lester Ridley. Ridley at the 20, the 25, the 30. Still going at the 35. Ridley out to the 37-yard line. Stop made by Burt Richardson, number 39. The kickoff comes in. He picks the ball up, and this is nothing more than determination. He's upset with the score. You can tell it. He's running with reckless abandon. You can get hurt here. You can drop the ball on the ground, but he's fortunate, and he puts the ball in good position for the Cyclones. Spencer to the far side. Hughes to the near side. The give goes to Patterson, and Patterson gets near the 40-yard line. Patterson underneath the pile. Stopped there by John Derby, the linebacker, number 31. Kuyava getting it in from two yards out. Three plays, 19 yards, got the job done in less than a minute. Some quick, quick scores by the Hawkeyes, Jay. Yes, sir. The trademark of a good football team, and the Hawkeyes ranked 14th in the nation, is take advantage of those breaks, and they've done it. Second down and eight. That's Patterson going in motion. Chris Peterson, lots of time. And again, he can't find anybody. Now he unloads, underthrows. It's intercepted by Eddie Polly, number 27. Trying to get that ball to Patterson. Patterson had a couple of steps. Now we've got a penalty marker way back downfield. So hold everything. This interception may be overruled. The penalty is going to go against the Hawkeyes. Here's the play. Pedersen drops back. He's got his receivers out, but the coverage by the Hawkeyes is tremendous. He's had to do this two or three times, and you don't want your quarterback to scramble that much. Here, he's throwing the ball, but he's throwing it for grabs, and Iowa's there to intercept. Let's check in with referee Jerry Hendrickson. Personal foul. Defense, first down. My guess is that 
It was a call, a shot that Peterson took just as he threw that ball. Hayden Fry shaking his head. It's going to give the Cyclones a nice advantage here. They get the football back, and they have a first down at the 47-yard line of the Hawkeyes. Extremely big break for the Cyclones. Not only did they get the ball back, but they're over the 50-yard line, and so they have to try to take advantage of an Iowa mistake now. Spencer is wide to the right. They put a man in the slot. That's Hughes. First and 10 at the 46. Peterson on the run. Throws. And it's complete here to the near sideline. That's Chris Spencer who took it in. He was one-on-one -on -one out there. The tackle by Jason Olenzak. Olenzak, number 13, making the play. Here it is. You'll see the misdirection. He goes to the left, but he almost gets caught. And that man went free. There's a nice block, a screen there, and he gets the pass off. But that was a broken play. That guy should not have been in the backfield for the uh, Hawkeyes. Cyclones have the ball inside the 35-yard line. Spencer and Hughes are the wide receivers on first and 10. The handoff going to Hill. Hill to the 31-yard line. Jason Dumont, 97, and John Derby, 31, are there to make the stop for the Hawkeyes. Early in the game, we saw Iowa State coming up in multiple formations. And when they do that, they try to confuse the defense. But here as of late, they're in the I formation, and that's a power formation. They're trying to run it at Iowa right now and then keep the run honest by throwing a ball once in a while. The freshman from Napierville, Illinois, Greg Jensik, in at wide receiver, set to the left side, second down and seven. A reminder that later in this telecast, we'll be choosing the pioneer players of the game. We've got a timeout. The Hawkeyes leading 17 to nothing over the Cyclones. More from Ames in a moment. The Cyclones are threatening down to the 31-yard line of Iowa. It's 17 nothing Hawkeyes. And as you can see, the rushing about even right now. But Iowa holds quite an advantage in passing department. Matt Rogers off to a good start. And they hold a big advantage on the scoreboard. But the Cyclones try to do something about that. Peterson straight back this time. Swings it out to Patterson. Patterson fighting for yardage out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Knocked out over there by Leroy Smith, number eight. Scott Plate, number six, also in on the play. The momentum is all Hawkeye. Watch this Iowa defense. They are pursuing to the ball extremely well. A little throw out to the flat. The running back gets it, and he has nowhere to go, and that's because Iowa is playing superb defense right now. Iowa leading 17 to nothing. 340 remaining in this first quarter. Iowa 10 and 3 in Ames over the years in this rivalry. This afternoon, the 39th meeting. Handoff going to Hill. And Hill moves across the 30-yard line where Matt Hilliard, number 48, a sophomore from Cedar Falls, makes the play. The last Cyclone win here was in 1981, a 23-12 win over the Hawkeyes. Third down conversions. Nobody has one yet. The Cyclones would really like to have one coming. Actually, this, of course, is fourth down and six. Well, let's see what they can do here. Look out. Long penalty, penalty flags. Uh, Peterson might have done a good job with his cadence that time to get the right side of that line to jump off. That's one of, one of the tricks of the game, obviously. If you're going to go for it in fourth down, you can go to a long count and hope to draw the defense offside. Well, it doesn't look like it worked for him this time, Jay. No, I think maybe Lance Keller moved first, number 75, who is the tackle out of Iowa Falls, Iowa. He was a defensive tackle at Ellsworth Community College. He may have made the move first. Well, you don't see it there, but uh, the officials felt that it was a Cyclone infraction, so now the Cyclones facing fourth and 11. And Patterson comes back in after visiting on the far sideline with Jim Walden and his hierarchy. Coach Walden 
a native of Aberdeen, Mississippi, and a quarterback in Wyoming. He led Wyoming to two conference titles and once was the Skyline Player of the Year. And now, a delay of game penalty against Iowa State is going to put the ball back at the 40-yard line. Some confusion. Those are the kind of problems you don't want to have happen to your team, not knowing what to do in those critical situations. It's early in the game and the season, so mistakes like that can happen. And Tula will be back to receive a punt from John Schnoor, the left-hander. Four punts last week for a 40.8 average against Eastern Illinois. He's punting against the win. Sets it high. Fair catch call for. It's going to be down at the five-yard line. You know, Jay, probably what happened in that last series was that it wasn't a penalty in actuality uh, by mistake. I think they took the penalty to get back a little farther so they could pooch kick that in there and put the Hawkeyes deep in their own territory. So that was probably a little strategy I think in you're taking right. that penalty. Nice job by 87, Matt Rouse, to get downfield and he makes the play on that punt. You and bet. Right now, the Hawks leading 17 to nothing with 2.05 remaining in the first quarter will start from their own six yard line. Hughes comes to the near sideline. Matt Rogers quarterbacking the Hawkeyes of Hayden Fry. And a give to the second man through. And nothing doing for Mike Saunders. Saunders may have gotten a yard. Good job there by Dan Milner, 58. Milner who had eight tackles last week. You kind of hate to see that as a coach when somebody comes in and zeroes in on the guy's knees or ankles and he goes flipping over. That's where a lot of injuries can occur, but it was good defense on the part of the Cyclones. Second down and nine. Clock running with a minute and a half to play. First quarter, if you're just joining us, it's been all Iowa. They lead it 17 to nothing. And again, nothing doing up the middle. That was Mike Saunders again. Mark Dunn, number 99. The senior from State Center, Iowa, made the stop. Again, excellent defense here. Uh, Iowa's not going to put it in the air at this point. They've got a comfortable lead. Iowa State's playing run, and it's evident that they're doing a pretty good job on it because they're only having to key in right here on the run. Iowa probably won't pass until they get into that third down situation now. With 102 remaining in the first quarter, Iowa calls a timeout. And as I mentioned, this is the 39th meeting between these two in-state rivalries. Uh, they started uh, this series back up in 77. The Cyclones' last win was in 82. That over in Iowa City, 19 to 7. Last year, the Hawkeyes won in Iowa City 45-35. It was Iowa 17-14 at half in that one. Nick Bell and Tony Stewart each gained over 100 yards, and Iowa recovered four Iowa State fumbles and scored the first 21 points in the second half to jump out to a big 38-14 advantage. Let's check in with the Iowa State sideline. Here is Rod Bottle. Well, Jay, this is a big play for Iowa State as they try to get some field position back in this game. Jim Walden sent his team, defensive team, back on the field and said, don't worry about the score. Stay within yourselves. Let's try and get back in this ball game." Now, as you look at Coach Walden, we see an entirely new unit come on the field, a punting unit. They're going to punt the ball out of there on third down. Maybe. That's right. <laughs> Jim Hyzak, the junior from Nashua, New Hampshire. Punting it out of there. Here is DeBrava. DeBrava with a nice return near the 35-yard line. Best field position for the Iowa State Cyclones that they've had yet this thus far in the game. They have to begin to capitalize on some of these things. They have to play air-free football to stay with the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes ranked 14th 
and they can't make mistakes if they want to stay in this game. Early on, they've made some critical mistakes, and they're paying for it because they've dug themselves a hole, Jay, and now they're fighting to get out of that hole. Coach Fry lecturing one of his youngsters. Cliff King, 43, made the tackle on DeBrava. Cyclones put it in play at the 36-yard line. In motion, Lamont Hill. They're spread out all over the field for Chris Peterson. Throws over the middle, and the catch is made by Ben Harvey. Harvey took it in right off his shoe tops, hit by Teddy Joe Fraley, 49. You've got, as Jay said earlier, you've got Iowa State spread out all over the place. They're sending every receiver, including the backfield people, out. And so that opens some spots. What's he, what he does is catch a spot in the middle with somebody open for a nice little gainer. Spencer goes wide to the left. Hughes comes to the right side. Second down and three. Banging up the middle is Patterson. And Patterson looks like he's got the first down at the 25-yard line. Bailey, number 49 again on the tackle. Patterson was a real key to their win last week, and you can see his running ability in the middle is very good. He keeps those legs moving, and he gets that little bit extra yardage that they needed for that first down. The Hawkeyes have had the wind at their back in the first quarter, which now comes to a close. And it has been a big, big first half for Iowa. They lead it 17 to nothing. Back with the second period of play right after this. 17 nothing Hawkeyes, but the Cyclones are threatening. And Peterson trying to hit Chris Spencer that time on a quick one. As Spencer was set to the right side trying to cut it back in the middle. Carlos James, a junior from Park Forest, Illinois, number five, had the coverage, but the pass was thrown behind the intended receiver. Time to take a look at the stats from the first quarter. They're brought to you by Allied Insurance. Arlen? Rushing, nine for 32. Iowa State, 13 for 47. You see pretty much look uh, pretty good except for the turnovers. There's the key in this game so far, and Iowa's taking advantage of those turnovers. On second down and 10, Peterson options, holds on, gets a couple. Peterson going to his right in 1990, completed 114 to 206. John Derby, 31, made the tackle. We talk about the triple option. Here is the example. Pedersen comes down the line, fakes to the fullback, pulls it out, but they've got the quarterback defensed real well. Comes up and meets him. This is the pure triple option, and Jim Walden has got to find one of the areas to make it work, either with the quarterback, the second option, or the third. Somewhere there, there's got to be, hopefully, an opening. Third down and eight. Wide to the right goes Hill. Peterson right back over the middle. It's complete to Harvey. Harvey comes up short of the first down. Fine tackle by Doug Book, the junior from Keystone, Iowa, number 18 saving the first down. Another just quick dump to a man cutting across the middle. He's covered, actually, but that's something you can get for three or four yards pretty consistently out of that spread formation. Iowa State calling a timeout. They want to talk it over, Arlen. My guess is that they'll go for it. We will find out when we come back here to Cyclone Stadium, Jack Price Field and Ames. Hawkeyes lead 17-0. The field goal, the young freshman, left-footed kicker out of Omaha, Nebraska, the redshirt freshman, the All-State from Westside High School, comes through with some points for the Cyclones. They were needed. The Hawkeyes lead it 17-3. It puts the first, board, first score on the board for Iowa State. It's 17-3, Iowa. Big kick there for the young freshman. Interesting uh, aspect of Iowa State, they have both a left-footed place kicker and a left-footed punter. Probably something that doesn't occur in very many college football teams across the country. And that can be a problem, especially in the punting game, because the spin's going the other way. That's right. Of course, they have those machines that they use now, and they can make them go both ways, but uh, the Cyclones put everybody but one man on the far side of the field for this kickoff. 
It is Hughes and Antula back, and the ball blows off the tee. And uh, Jim Walden setting them all to the far side except one player, and then putting them into motion the far side. <laughs> they come over here, but the ball off the tee. So let's see what they do now. Coach Walden talked to us yesterday about the fact, Darlin, that he wasn't going to have any tricks up his sleeve. He just wanted to play good, solid football and not have a lot of problems. He's had problems with turnovers and a very fine Hawkeye club. Now, here they come again across the field and the kickoff. And it's going to be downed in the end zone by Danon Hughes. It'll come out to the 20-yard line where the Hawkeyes who lead it 17 to 3 with 1349 remaining in this first half will put it in play. Well there was kind of a proviso on that trick play business Jay. You know as long as uh, Coach Walden felt that he could play with the Hawkeyes one on one they were going to play straight up football. He's known for a little trickery and now that he's behind he may have to take some chances. They call him the riverboat gambler and we'll see if that if he's up for that name. Well, when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. He didn't want to be in this situation. Montgomery and Saunders in the backfield, and that's Montgomery. Lou Montgomery, the junior from Waterloo, Iowa, three touchdowns against Hawaii. Larry Radigan, 46, the defensive co-captain out of Council Bluffs, made the stop. One of the stalwarts of the Cyclone defense. He penetrates into the backfield. Two blockers just go around him, and he has an easy tackle in the Hawkeye backfield. That wasn't as much a great play by him as a, maybe a blown play by one of the Hawkeye blockers. Radigan, of course, has a brother who plays at Notre Dame. They're missing Shane Dunleavy, a broken hand in the Eastern Illinois game. That hurts the Cyclones on defense. Second down and eight. Rogers over the middle. Alan Cross, the tight end, made the catch. Cross number 87 is a junior from San Diego, California. He was stopped by Malcolm Goodwin, number 40. Jay, one of the keys to a great receiver is being able to catch that ball in traffic. And he was covered, and Iowa State's on him pretty hard here, but he hangs on, and it's a great reception for the Hawkeyes. Rogers, 12 of 18. 168, two touchdowns. Now this crowd comes to its feet to urge on the defense. They're trying to make their first third down conversion here, and they do. Carrying the football, Marvin Lampkin, the junior from East St. Louis, Illinois, came out of that great program there. Number 33 carrying the ball, Fulton, 36 on the tackle. Watch that offensive line just push the Cyclones out of the way. That's good power football. You know, much was said, in fact, earlier in the telecast about how big and strong that Iowa State offensive line is. Hey, don't sell the Hawkeyes short. They've got a great one also. Montgomery 34 and Lampkin 33 now in the backfield. Rodgers may be audibleizing here as he puts them in the eye. On first and ten, play action. The throw to the far line, sideline, all oh, wide open. Alan Cross, the tight end. Cross was wide open out there. He had beaten Sean Walker on the play. That's what Matt Rogers does best. He's coming out of the I formation. He's dropping a straight drop back. Perfect pro type quarterback. Throws across his body, which is the hardest pass. Got a wide open receiver for a big game. And that's what the Hawkeyes do well. Yeah, that's play action at his best there. He really used it. Rogers out of Walpole, Massachusetts. Allen Cross making the catch. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. Lampkin carrying. Lampkin, 11 carries, 68 yards for Hawaii last week. And the gain is down to the 43-yard line. A reminder that later in the telecast, in fact, in the fourth quarter, we will tell you about the pioneer players of the game. We'll be selecting them, our crew here this afternoon. Keith Murphy, Arlen Sianowski. Rod Bodhold and John Campbell. This is Jay Randolph with you, and on the run, Rogers. 
Rodgers brought down by Matt Nitsche on a fine play. Nitsche had some help from Matt Rayberg, who forced the quarterback to move. The one thing that the Iowa State defense is doing very well, and that is pursuing to the ball. You're seeing some people from the backside closing in. Nitsche there making the stop. Good job by an Iowa State defense that has had to play in with its back to the wall most of the day. Rodgers, third in career passing at Iowa. They are one out of four on third down conversions. He may have audibled here. Third and seven at the 44. Rodgers straight back all kinds of time over the middle. Drop. Dropped by Danon Hughes. Bugs, number 13, was right there with him, but Arlen, that was a catchable ball. Yes, it was, Jay. He had a chance at it. Iowa State had dropped down. In fact, they had, I believe, six defensive backs in in a game at that point in time for that pass, but he had a catchable shot at it. Jim Hyzak to do the putting. Two punts, 38 yards last week against the win. Look at this floater. It hits at the 18. Cyclone bounce. Oh, big bounce all the way up to the 35, 36-yard line. It's a nine-yard punt. When we come back, the Cyclones will have the football. 10.06 remaining in the first half. Hawk 17, Cyclones 3. 3 Iowa. Second down coming up as they ran a play just a moment ago that we'll show you. They try to pass downfield and the Cyclone folks wanted a call right here an interception. Gary Clark number 19 picks it off. There's a penalty marker down backfield back downfield the tight end Warmack was the intended receiver. The pass way overthrown by Peterson and the indication is that the penalty will go against the Cyclones. It'll be refused, so we've got a turnover. Show you a replay of this interception. Just before this, they tried a long pass downfield, Arlen. He simply drops back, and here's the problem. He overthrows. You know, Jay, he hasn't had much chance to throw the ball yet, Offense. and he's off just Declined. a little bit. First down. So another turnover. And the ball at the 44-yard line of the Hawkeyes. First and 10. They'll operate from there, leading at 17 to 3. Rogers on a little delay. This is Lampkin. Lampkin gets to midfield, just across the midfield stripe. Tackle made by Malcolm Goodman, the junior from here in Ames, Iowa. Spot the ball at the 49-yard line. Here it is. Ground level view. He's coming right at us. The one thing about that Hawkeye offense, they are steady. They're not going to make a lot of mistakes. They're playing some power football right now and content to do so with the lead that they have. Dean and Filoon set to the far sideline. And the counter back the other way. Spinning out of there comes Lampkin. He's got a first down at the 40-yard line. Dubrava made the stop to John Campbell at the Iowa sideline. Jay, that last punt by the Hawkeyes was on the far side of the field, but if I saw it right, the putter, Hyzak, downed his own punt. You don't see that happen very often. You did see it right. <laughs> and you don't see it happen. That wind uh, is gusting at 15 to 20 miles an hour, and of course, the Hawkeyes going against it right now. First and 10 for them. 8.50 remaining in the first half. They lead at 17 to 3. The little delay goes to Montgomery. And Lou gets to the 32. And the fans yelling, Lou, Lou. The stop was made by Kevin Fulton, number 36, the defensive back. Picture perfect delay. He waits a count or two and then begins to run, gets the handoff. It kind of freezes the defense because they're not sure whether Rodgers is going to throw or hand off. And it worked to their adv uh, advantage, obviously. Lou Montgomery, sweet Lou. Coming off that big three touchdown game against Hawaii. Second down and two. 
pitch back coming. This is Lampkin, and a fine play. Coming across to make the stop, Malcolm Goodwin. Goodwin, the junior, right here, the hometowner. I formation, little pitch to the running back. But you know, the Hawkeyes are just not having a lot of success running the ends on Iowa State. They're pursuing well, but right now, that middle has been weak, and Iowa's been running on the Cyclones fairly easily. Interesting call coming up for Hayden Fry's club. Third down and three. Hughes going in motion. And the handoff to Lampkin. Lampkin's got the first down, driving forward before he was hit by Goodwin, number 40. The gain down to the 29-yard line. They're attacking that soft middle we just talked about. You can see the Iowa offensive line blowing the Cyclones off the line of scrimmage. That's the key right now. The Iowa Hawkeyes are controlling the line of scrimmage, and that's why they're moving the ball. Dean and Falloon are set out to the left side. On first and 10, Matt Rogers, little delay, goes to Montgomery. Montgomery wrapped up, got about a yard. Larry Radigan leading the way. You know, I talked about Shane Dunleavy being out of action. The Cyclones are also missing Marcus Allen and Jay Jordan, two outside linebackers, and that's hurt. This is, a, this is a tough one when they have these little draws. You can see the center. He handles the nose guard, but he slips off and makes the tackle. You've got to be able to hold that block for several seconds, and he just slipped off to make that tackle. Hughes is in the slot left, and Harold Jasper, 83, the freshman from Bellport, New York, is set way wide to the right. And again, it is Lampkin. Lampkin knocked out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line by Matt Nitsche. Lampkin very impressive in this drive. If you'll notice, Iowa is not passing the ball, but they don't have to. Look at the blocking. The wall that was created for him was excellent. He beats the cornerback, and he's got a wide open feel. If it's not for the safety or a linebacker coming across, he's in the end zone, Jay. Lampkin's East St. Louis High School team won the Illinois title. Top schools. They've had that tremendous program there that I mentioned earlier on. He is a good-looking football player, first and nine. Ball just inside the 10-yard line. Dean goes in motion, 86, and back they come again to Lampkin. They are really featuring him at this point. Sampson and Lampkin combined for 135 yards on 20 carries last Saturday. They are definitely the bulwark of that offense, especially today. They found a weakness, they're able to run up the middle, and they're starting to exploit it. And Lampkin is doing an excellent job of running that ball up in there. Took two people to bring him down, Schultz 48, and Armstrong number seven. Second down, goal to go at the seven yard line. Hawks leading 17 to three, trying to get more. A little delay, and with the football, Montgomery. Montgomery down inside the five to the three. Penalty marker down. Mark DeBrava on the tackle, 25. May have a hold coming up. Let's look at it. It was a hold against Iowa. That's going to hurt their chances. Iowa State's in an eight-man front. They're trying to screen off for that run, and they were able to do it, but got a little help from that penalty also. Holding offense. Repeat the down. And they'll repeat it from the 18-yard line. 5.22 remaining in this first half. Hawkeyes leading 17-3. The penalties, 3 for 30 for Iowa, 3 for 20 for Iowa State. Along with Keith Murphy and Arlen Sienowski, Rod Bodhold and John Campbell, Jay Randolph with you from Cyclone Stadium, Jack Priceville. The interstate battle being won at the moment by the Hawks. They have rolled here in the first half. In motion, Danon Hughes. Play action, lots of time. The throw, and penalty marker at the five yard line. Dubrava is called 
You've got the play action. He's going to fake that handoff. He's got tremendous time. The Hawkeye offensive line is doing a great job. Here's the pass, and there you see the interference. He's, you can't tackle the man, Jay, before he's got the ball. They'll spot it down at the four-yard line. Defensive pass interference. Def first down. Number 86, Anthony Dean coming back in as a wide receiver. They've got Allen Cross, 87, there at the tight end spot. The penalty gives them second down from the four. And that time, Lampkin gets barely back to the line of scrimmage. Grubb 93, Dunn 99 leading the way. Rayberg also there. There's your handoff from the backfield. Iowa State, one thing positive about them, in close down situations and with their back against the wall, have been playing pretty tough defense, Jay. Iowa two out of five on third down situations. The ball just outside the two yard line. Rodgers was able to hold on. Goodwin, 40, popping down on him. Trouble on the snap. Mike Devlin, the center, number 60, and Mac Rogers, number 7. He never seemed to get the ball here. Yeah. Let's see. Now, yeah, it's the center's got it up there. What happens in those kinds of plays, Jay, is the center is so involved in trying to make his block because it's crucial down at the goal line that he doesn't get the ball far enough to get the quarterback, up to the quarterback, rather. And you've got a fumble, but luckily, Iowa retains possession for them. Third down. Goal to go. Balloon set way to the left side. The pass into the end zone. He was out of the end zone. Hughes, Danon Hughes made the catch, but came down out of the end zone. Armstrong, number seven, back there on the coverage. Let's watch and see if he was in or how much of his foot got in before he went out. All, all Rodgers does is throw it up. He's up in the air, and there it is. Great the call feet. by the official. Excellent call. Skillet on. Hartlieb will hold a 20-yard field goal attempt coming up. He has one field goal already. This is up, and it is good. We've got a penalty marker down, though. Let's see what the call is. Skillet kicked a 41-yarder earlier. This was to be his 10th straight if he got it through. The Hawkeyes are saying the penalties against the Cyclones, but uh, the discussion continues there. Our referee, Jerry Hendrickson, again, for those of you who joined us late, this is an all-Big Ten crew. When the Cyclones go to Iowa City, it'll be an all-Big Eight crew. And that's something relatively new, Jay. I like the idea. Seems fair to me. They're gonna, the penalties are gonna, against the Cyclones. Twelve players on the field. And uh, that... is going to be declined and the field goal a 20 yarder will be good the field goal is good the penalty will be on the kickoff too many men participating you heard him <laughs> 20 to 3 322 remaining here at iowa state the hawkeyes are in control away from turnovers but so far they have turned the ball over three times and it shows on the scoreboard it's iowa 20 Iowa State three. Keith, he also told us yesterday that he was sure they had done away from the fear factor as he lectures his troops on the far sideline. It may not be the fear factor any longer. It might not be a situation where they have just maybe been a little too high, but he's had a problem here in this first half, 
as the Hawkeyes went 11 plays, 56 yards, got the field goal from Skillet to take a 20 to 3 advantage here as we have 322 remaining in this first half. And Skillet will kick off Lamont Hill 9 and Lester Ridley number 23 are back. And they took the penalty on the kick against the wind. It's still a very short kick. Hill, Hill trying to break out of there. And he is going to be brought down around the 13-yard line. A fine play by Scott Blake out of Brooklyn, Michigan. 5'10", 195. So an opportunity for Chris Peterson and the Cyclones to see if they can get a little business done in the last 3 minutes, 17 seconds of this first half. Crucial drive for the Cyclones if they want to keep the game even close at this point, Jay. Peterson, four out of seven, 25 yards. Through one interception, it was overruled by a penalty, so that was wiped out. That's Patterson coming in motion. Peterson, a lot of time. Peterson on the run. Out of bounds. Got the first down. Just got past the marker. Moses Santos, number 99, the senior from Hempstead, New York, making the play. Santos, who had to sit out the Hawaii game, back in there, big number 99. Again, something that you don't like to see, though. He's back to pass. That's his objective, and he's got to run again. That's about the third or fourth time today. Runs out of bounds, does get the first down, but that wasn't the play that was called. I think we were incorrect on that graphic. That interception was not wiped out. He has thrown one interception. Lamont Hill, number nine, battling upfield to the 32-yard line. Lamont Hill out of Detroit, Michigan, an all-stater there. Top returner last year. Rod Davis, 54, on the tackle. And some help also from Teddy Joe Faley. 240 remaining to be played in this first half. 20 to three, the Hawks leading. to Sundiata Patterson. He gets to the 35-yard line. It's enough for the first down. Patterson with four touchdowns last season and four last week. Clock running with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining to be played in this first half. A sellout crowd here in Ames watching the Hawkeyes and the Cyclones. Spencer goes wide to the right. Hughes is in the slot right. Hill comes in motion to the near sideline. Peterson on the run. Peterson sliding for the first down. Well, if he continues to do that, he's going to draw some of those defensive backs up. But let's give credit to this secondary of the Hawkeyes. They're doing a very excellent coverage job. That's really the key. Most of the coverage, too, is man-on-man, -man, which is the most difficult to play. And they're doing a great job. He's looking around. He can't see a receiver. And that's been forcing him to run. Fortunately, he's gaining some yards. But that's certainly not what's supposed to happen, Jay. Cyclones have one timeout remaining. Peterson throwing down the side. He had a man. Lamont Hill had three steps. He was isolated on the linebacker out there, Faley, and he had three steps on him. If he could have put that one on consignment, the Cyclones might have gotten six. That was just a streak pattern. He takes off, tries to beat the defender, and the quarterback's job is to lay it up under him. But, again, overthrown just a little bit. One thirty-six remaining of the first half. Second down and ten. Chris Peterson changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Running the option. Nothing doing. Peterson has to hold on and is brought down by Rod Davis, the nose man, 54. 13 tackles against Hawaii last Saturday. The one thing the Hawkeyes have always done, even by Coach Fry's admission, is play the triple option. And they were playing an option play, and the Iowa defense is doing a great job of stuffing it back. Patterson's 
Split to the left side. So is 89 Spencer. Spencer with a fine catch. They set the two of them here on the near sideline, and Spencer cutting across took it off his shoe tops. He was hit by Eddie Foley, number 25. 27 Foley. And the hurry up offense as we have 103 remaining. Peterson. Oh, he tried to get outside. But a big, big play. Rod Davis, 54, leading the way. You see it again, Jay. He's back to pass, and he's covered, or all his receivers are, and he's forced to run, scramble, and, of course, he gets caught in the backfield. Clock running. Peterson running. He throws. It's complete. On the run. 81, Brandon Hughes. Hughes has a first down at the 14-yard line. Gary Clark, number 19, on the tackle. 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Penalty marker down. Was he over the line of scrimmage? That's what they say. He was beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw that. I knew it was close, Arlen. I wondered about it. Let's take a look at this because... This is a very big call going against the Cyclones. That's one of the problems when you have that scrambling quarterback. He can get some people open by doing that scrambling, but if he's not paying attention to where that line of scrimmage is, he may go over, and if he does... Oh, that was close. It's real close, real yeah, close, the official Jay. right on the play, the side judge, and... Uh, They're right down there on that field. So 27 seconds remaining, and you wipe out that fine play for the Cyclones. Peterson steps up, has time, running out of there, gets to the 38-yard line, 15 seconds remaining. They have a timeout. Why don't they use it? Well, they may try to get one playoff here. Now they yeah. use the timeout. Yeah. Why in the world? They wasted 10 seconds there. That is a problem for the coaching staff. They ought to know what that situation is over there. Inexperience, Jay. It's early in the season. They're still having problems trying to decide what they're going to do in quick offenses, things like that. It can happen, certainly, and uh, obviously it did in that particular case. But a crucial error for Iowa State. They needed to try to score before the halftime. Iowa, of course, needs that momentum to stay, and so they need to keep them out of the end zone. Let's check in with John Campbell, Iowa sideline. Jay, one reason Iowa State's moving the ball through the air, possibly one reason, is the starting safety, Brian Wise, has his left ankle in ice right now. They undid the tape. They put it in ice. I talked to the Iowa team doctor. He said they're going to try to retape it at halftime. They expect him to play, but he has not been playing in this final series. We're going to get a field goal attempt 55 yarder from ty stewart the freshman now the wind at his back we saw him kick some 50 yarders in practice 55 yard field goal attempt coming up for the left footer he's got it on the way it's not going to get there wide to the right well i would imagine that coach walden and his staff have got to wonder why they couldn't get a timeout before two seconds remaining but the young freshman who made his first field goal ever for the Cyclones today misses this 55-footer, and he just didn't catch it. He knew it. Look at him bat himself in the helmet. We're at the end of the first half here in Ames, and the Iowa Hawkeyes lead it 20-3. to oh, Hayden Fry, been coaching football for a long time. He played at Baylor, and... Later coached at SMU and at North Texas, and just as quick as the rain came, it begins to subside. Hayden Fry named the head coach at Iowa in 79, a record of 90-50 and four, the winningest coach in Iowa history. And let's check in with John Campbell and get the shoe story. Well, the Hawkeyes have two pair of shoes here today. Most of them are wearing this turf shoe, lots of little cleats. It's designed for this rainy weather. I noticed some of them have more of the basketball type. It's a flatter sole. Joe Velliser, for one, the tackle wearing these. So two kinds of shoes being worn by the Hawks today. Now, 
and quickly to Rod Bothole, Iowa State. Well, Jay, on this sideline, it's not the shoes, it's the hands they're worried about. Iowa State needs to take care of the football. The word from the coaches is we can't keep putting our defense in a hole, guys. Ty Stewart will put the ball in play for the Cyclones. Harold Jasper, 83. Danon Hughes, number three, back to receive. Nine men coming from the far side as the kick comes. And it will be taken by Hughes at the eight, at the 20, outside at the 25, to the 30, to the 32-yard line. Nice return by the junior from Newark, New Jersey, Dane and Hughes. A tackle made by Steve Wareham, a defensive back from St. Charles, Illinois, number 20. And it'll be Matt Rogers, number seven, to quarterback the Hawkeyes as we begin the second half of play. Lou Montgomery. At quarterback, number seven, Matt Rogers. 34, Mike Saunders, 32, Hughes is three. The split end is 82, Galoon. And the handoff going to Saunders. Saunders getting a yard or two before he is wrapped up by Dan Watkins, number 41. It was 17 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. The Hawkeyes. Teams traded field goals in the second period. 20 to 3. As this big sellout crowd of better than 54,000 begins to settle in for the second half with you. Paul Kuba, uh, Kuyaba now, the junior from Cudahy, Wisconsin, 23, replacing Montgomery. So it's Kuyaba and Saunders in the backfield. Second down and nine. In motion, Danon Hughes. Saunders, nothing doing. Dan Milner, 58 on the tackle. Milner out of Kashmir, Washington. See an end zone shot. Iowa hasn't changed much coming out. They're still going to run the ball, and they're going to run it fairly successfully. Good penetration by Iowa State. And I want to tell you, the Iowa State defense is playing a pretty good game despite the score. They've just been in a disadvantage getting it in their territory. And I mentioned again, they're missing Dunleavy, Allen, and Jordan. Rogers throwing, and it is incomplete. So it is three and out for the Hawkeyes. That pass appeared to be intended for Hughes over there on the far side. That was really the first poor throw from Rogers. Ball might have been wet. The Cyclone fans come to life after the defense does the job. The Cyclones have the wind at their back here in the third quarter. James McMillian, 86, back to receive the punt. This punt will come from Kusiak, or Jim Heizak it is. No return on the play. 27-yard punt, and Cyclones will have good field position as they start at the 37-yard line. Now, the one thing that is causing the Hawkeyes some disconcern right now, and I'm sure Coach Fry, is his punting game. He has had several, or at least two, really poor punts now, and it's given the Cyclones a pretty good field position. Leonard Holmes, 22, a freshman from Detroit, is in the backfield. Leonard Holmes. Hand off to Holmes. Holmes over the 40. This is a pure freshman. Very fast young man, cracking over the 40-yard line. Nelson, 93, Derby, 31 on the tackle. Very seldom do you see a pure freshman in there in a starting lineup position, or at least playing quite a bit. He's a good runner, and he's a fast runner, and you'll see a lot of him in the years to come, I'm sure. Jensik, 24, at a wide receiver spot now for the Cyclones. He's here to the near side. Second down and six. Chris Peterson to Patterson. And Patterson to about the 43-yard line. Maybe a yard on the play. Jeff Nelson, 93, again there to make the tackle. Nelson, big fella out of Stillwater, Minnesota, does a wonderful job. Also, 
Ron Gator, a senior from Marion, Iowa. Out on this turf can get a little slippery when it's wet. Yeah, it can. In fact, it caused us a great deal of concern against Colorado one year. Uh, we, we had to actually go and change shoes on the sidelines because of the water. It can get real slick. Third down and four. Peterson rolling out. Gets outside, but can't get the first down. Peterson looked like that time he had made up his mind to run early. And Leroy Smith, number eight, who is out of Sicklerville, New Jersey, a senior, makes a fine play here. Once in a while, you can go to the well one too many times. He's made his decision. He's not going to throw, but he's not getting much support. The corners are coming in on him, and they stop him before he gets to that first down marker. Schnoor will do the punting. The wind at his back. And Harold Jasper, 83, is downfield to receive the punt. So neither club can get anything going in their first offensive chances in the third period. A booming punt taken at the 15-yard line. And that's where the Hawkeyes will put it in play when we come back. Here in Ames with 11-11 to play third quarter. Hawks 20, Cyclones 3. For an injury update, John. Thank you, Keith. Brian Wise, whom we uh, told you about, had his uh, ankle in ice before the halftime. He played in that last series. The left ankle heavily taped, but he played. Seemed to be moving fairly well. The Hawkeyes put it in play. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. That is Saunders. Saunders breaking and spinning out. And he gets across the 25-yard line, very close to a first down. Dan Watkins, 41, making the stop. The true sign of a good back is his ability to break tackles. And you can see here, whether it's Iowa State's poor tackling or his, you know, you can't tackle a guy by the arms like they're trying to do. If you do, he's going to gain some yardage. And obviously, the Hawkeyes are doing a good job with that. And it was enough for the first down. The ball spotted between the 25 and 26 yard line. We get word that a line of thunderstorms are headed this way and it's getting very dark off to the north end of the field. Here comes Saunders. Saunders to the 35 yard line. Mark DeBraba, 25, the free safety, top tackler in 90 among the defensive backs in the Big Eight, came up to make the play. Iowa State's been playing the corner very well, containing the Hawkeye rush. But in this particular one, not so well. He gets a good block, and there's uh, some pursuit that finally catches him, but not before he gains four or five yards. Last week, as I mentioned earlier, Saunders and Lampkin combined for over 135 yards. They seem to feature these fellows in shifts. In, you know, we saw Lampkin in a very fine segment in that first half, and now it seems to be Saunders. Saunders again, didn't find a hole that time. Big play by Milner, 58. Travis Block, the senior from Swingle, Iowa, also there, number 65. You're going to see some real good penetration by the Iowa State off or defensive line. They're shooting the gaps and clogging up the middle, at least on that particular play. They did a very good job with it. Matt Rayberg also in there on the play. Rayberg out of Omaha, Nebraska. He is taking over today for Shane Dunleavy. It is third down and two. Hawks lead at 20 to three. 9-15 remaining third quarter. Saunders. Saunders spins out, gets the first down. He's brought down at the 45-yard line by Kevin Lazard, 33, and Matt Grubb, 93. Watch as he comes out. He's getting some help, but you're going to see something kind of interesting right there. Two players, they get knocked off, and finally he's drugged down. Aiden Fry got to be pleased the way Lou Montgomery, number 34, came up and made the block on that last play, and he's got to be pleased the way his club's handling the running of the clock here as they move the ball along the ground. Saunders over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Milner again, 58, making the play. 
Mentioned before, you can't tackle these good ball players with the arm. Look at that. He can just shed the arm, but then the pursuit finally catches him. But you can't tackle with one arm in the Big Ten or the Big Eight, for that matter, Jay. Not anywhere in the big time. Hayden Fry talking things over. Seven times his teams have been in the top 20. And they're ranked 14 right now. Second down and 10. A lot of time for Rodgers. Unloads to the far sideline. And Montgomery made the catch. He doesn't have enough for a first down at the 48-yard line. Scott Schultz, number 48, makes the stop. Spot the ball at the 49-yard, actually, where it'll be second down. Or third down, excuse me, third and four. Clock running with 7.35 remaining in the third quarter. The Hawkeyes eating up a lot of clock. Jim Walden's club, they need the football. Ground control offense, that's a perfect plan by Hayden Fry. Keep it away from the Cyclones, they obviously can't score. Out of the eye, Saunders again, breaks away. This is what I'm talking about that Fry loves to do. Earlier today, we saw him feature Lampkin on a long drive that ate up a lot of time. Now they're featuring Saunders. That last tackle by DeBrava. The interesting th thing about that, Jay, is the defense can't key on one specific individual. If they key on the run, one of the running backs, then they have to worry about Rodgers. So it's a multi-dimensional offense that the Hawkeyes possess, and it does them a great deal of service here, especially against the Cyclones, who are having trouble right now stopping the run. 55 yards for Saunders. First and 10 at the 33. Hughes goes in motion. Play action. Rodgers throwing long downfield. Almost intercepted. Kevin Lazard, 33, got a hand on it. He was trying to go to Jasper. Now, Jasper was in the zone down there and had a step or two, but the pass was thrown way wide of him. It was, a, it was a difficult uh, throw for Rodgers just from the standpoint that he's running to his right. And whenever you, when the quarterback is right-handed and he's running to the right, he doesn't have near the power. He, he does pull up, but he just underthrows it slightly. Otherwise, we could have had another six points for the Hawkeyes. Lazard coming up, nearly picked it off. Second and ten. The delay. This time it's Montgomery. Montgomery wrapped up by Rat Rayberg. Rayberg, the senior from Omaha, having a fine afternoon here. This is one play that hasn't worked for the Hawkeyes. They've tried to draw two or three times today, and it just hasn't yielded much yardage. Iowa State seems to keyed in on that and have watched it. Third down and nine coming up. Six minutes, 15 seconds to play, third quarter. A lot of time rolling off the clock here in Ames. Rogers straight back, over the middle. Downfield, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Dana Hughes. Double coverage, Andrew Bugs 13, and DeBrava 25, and they were there to crunch him. You see, Rodgers dropping back has plenty of time. I believe they were in zone coverage. And it looked for a moment as a, he, he had him uh, beat into the end zone. It looked like it might be a score, but they caught up with him because the pass was underthrown by Rodgers. Otherwise, you're looking at six points. This is Scott Fisher in punt formation. Fisher with a little kick against the wind, doesn't go very far. It'll be out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. So the Cyclones will have an opportunity to move. We'll be back with more action from Ames in just a moment. Up along with Keith Murphy and Arlen Sienowski, 
Rod Von Holt and John Campbell here in Ames, Iowa. Hope you're enjoying the action. The Hawks lead the Cyclones 20 to 3. We have 5.53 remaining to be played in this third quarter. Chris Peterson leads out the Cyclones. They start from the 13-yard line. Got them spread out all over the field. Brandon Hughes in the slot left. Spencer wide to the left here on the near sideline. And the referee, Jerry Hendrickson, was here to the near sideline talking with Coach Fry about something. The Cyclones were ready to play, but... The Hawkeyes have Carlos James, the extra defensive back number five in there. The pitch to Hill. Hill gets a yard at the most. Rod Davis, 54, the big senior out of Queens, New York. 6'1 and 260 making the stop. The Hawkeyes basically a zone defensive team. Clock running with five and a half to play in the third quarter. It has been scoreless. The Hawkeyes got their lead 17 to nothing in the first quarter. They traded field goals in the second period. Nothing shaking for either side here in the third. Peterson in trouble. Gets away. Throws. And flags fly. There was nobody in the vicinity but a big lineman. He should have let that ball fly way downfield. Instead, in trouble, he delivered it downfield, and the only man in a Cyclone uniform was a lineman, number 56, Lawrence Roberts, and the flags fly. Jay, those are those mistakes again. All right, we talked about which quarterback would get the job done today. Matt Rogers has not been brilliant. But he's been very good, and he hasn't turned it over. He hasn't made the mistakes. Yeah, Iowa State, you know, the fumbles, the interception, the underthrowed balls, those types of things are a real concern Field to them. Decline. They decline the penalty, the illegal receiver downfield, and that's going to bring up third down and ten. Okay, team. Hayden Fry along the near sideline. I first knew him when he coached at SMU. I had the privilege of doing his Sun Bowl game in 1963 when Hayden Fry's Mustangs lost to Oregon's Ducks in El Paso. Winning his coach in Iowa history now. Great motivator. Both these coaches have fine personalities and great football knowledge. Now a whistle and a timeout for the Cyclones. So again, a problem of some kind, and they're going to have to talk it over. 5.08 left to play in the third quarter. Iowa has the advantage, 20 to 3. Cyclones in trouble. Peterson. Oh, they were coming. They were swarming, and they got to him. Well, they knew it was an obvious passing situation. Nelson, 93, leading the way. deception away when it's an obvious passing situation they were sending them when you don't have to play the run it becomes extremely easy to rush that pass with reckless abandon and that's what they did they were able to get a sack and have put the cyclones deep in their own end zone john schnoor putting from his end zone low pass the outside backers, John Derby, 31, Teddy Joe Faley, 49. Now, I'll tell you something, Jay. Last year, Iowa blocked the punt against them, and they did it again. One of the problems that Iowa State has in this punting formation is it's really a shotgun formation, a passing formation, where they bring the punter in. So that's part of the problem that they have. The Hawks tack on two. They lead it 22 to 3, 420 left, third quarter. 
Iowa's Matt Hilliard rushes in and blocks a punt. Iowa State's fourth turnover of the day, and the Hawkeyes put two more points on the board. It's 22-3. Here's the block one more time. I thought it was 49, Faley, that got there. It was Matt Hilliard, 48. He had some help from John Derby, 31. And the safety makes it a 22-3 game. And the punt coming up. Downfield. Jasper coming back with it. Jasper over the 45 to the 47-yard line. And a huge pile up there. You not only get two points stacked on for the opposition, but you don't get the football. That's no fun. Four minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And the Hawkeyes continue to dominate, and you'll continue to see them keep the ball on the ground. Hayden Fry wants them to chew that clock away right now. Matt Whitaker, 46, is there at the tight end spot. Rogers hands it over to Montgomery. Montgomery fights into Cyclone territory at the 49-yard line. DeBrava, 25 on the tackle. What a game DeBrava's had this afternoon as you look there at Montgomery. DeBrava's a real hitter, the junior from Urbandale, Iowa. He was the top defensive player in 1990 for Iowa State. And although his club is down 22 to 3, DeBrava has had a whale of a game this afternoon as I watched it from high above this stadium. A little counter to Montgomery. Nothing shaking for him as he's hit for a loss of about a half a yard. Leading the way was Malcolm Goodwin, number 40. You know, Jay, you were talking about DeBrava having a great game, and he certainly is. He's making a lot of tackles. Last year, he led the club in them, and one of the things Coach Walden said to us yeah. was that his object this year was not to lead the team in tackles. And what that means is you don't want your safety making all the tackles. If that's what's happening, the running backs are getting into your end zone and or at least into your defensive backfield. So. You are so right. Third down and seven. Ball just over the 50. See if Rogers puts it up here. He's going to. And going to be intercepted. Coming back with it. Andrew Buzz. Another bad throw. Intended for Damon Hughes. Buzz coming up with the interception. The junior from Carson, California. You're on ground level with the player. Rogers looking downfield and just throws badly. Neither quarterback are having what you would consider an excellent game. Both have had several miscues, overthrows, and now an interception from Rogers. Mark Dunn came in there on the Hawkeye quarterback, Dunn number 99, and he helped to cause that problem. Want to check on Saunders. We saw him limping along the sideline, and we'll check in with John Campbell when we have an opportunity. Incomplete pass as Peterson was intending for Ben Harvey, number 80. Now to the Iowa State sideline and Rod Bothold. Well, Rod, trouble with your microphone over there again. It has been a tough time for you on occasion this afternoon, as it has been the Cyclones. 22 to 3 right now. Hawkeyes, 2.36 remaining in the third quarter. Second down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Banging up the middle is Lamont Hill. Hill gets to the 36. In underneath the pile, Nelson, 93, and Rod Davis, 54. I think if Iowa State wants to stay in this game, they're going to have to start pretty quickly putting the ball in the air. They've got to open that Hawkeye defense because the run is not doing it right now, Jay. And the wind's 15 to 20, maybe 25 mile an hour gusts. Maybe not quite that much on the field, but the Cyclones will lose the wind in two minutes. That's right. Cyclones facing third and six. Pass is complete. And then it 
was dropped. Lamont Hill couldn't hold on. Hill didn't have enough for a first down, I don't think, at the 42, but he couldn't hold on here. Now watch as Pedersen lets go of it. He gets hit a dandy lick, and that may have had some problem with the pass being a little low. He couldn't hold on to the ball. That lick came from Le Leroy Smith, number eight. Schnoor to do the putting as the wind at his back. Jasper is deep. Schnorr's kick is a boomer. Let it go. And look out. Down at the three-yard line. Well, there's a Casey call for the fair catch and let it go. Let's check in now with Rod Bothole. Well, Jay, Iowa State finally has a field position advantage right now, but so far they've made the two mistakes that Jim Walden said they could not make. They have turned the ball over, and they have made mistakes on the special team. That has made a lot of time on the field for the defense, something Iowa State does not need. John Campbell on the Iowa sideline. Rod, the Mike Saunders is back up walking around. He looks okay. I think it was just his ankle. He'll be back in there. You gentlemen in the booth might correct me, but I think that Iowa turnover was their first turnover this year. I won't correct you. You're right on target. 136 remaining. Hawkeyes lead a 22 to 3, have the football. They operate from their own three yard line. That's Mike Saunders carrying it to the four. Mark Dunn, 99. Lazard also in there on the play, 33. Tells you a little bit about their running backs, even though they're not well known. Look at the strength Saunders possesses. He cuts off of a block there. He's down at the one and gets two more yards, almost to the five there. A very strong runner, and that's what Iowa's good at, Jay, playing that power offense. One minute to play in the third quarter. Rayburg, 95. Nietzsche, 45, also in there to help out on this tackle. Good pursuit by the Iowa State defense. They're trying to get to that corner. They've been working on it all day and still unsuccessful. Left to play in this period, 25 seconds. Greg Allen is in there at a tight end spot now, and he now he comes out. Allen number 85. Allen Cross, 87, replacing him at the tight end position. Saunders and Kuyaba in the backfield. They give to Saunders. Fine defensive play by Goodwin, 40, and Rayburg, 95. The gun sounds. The end of the third quarter. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead the Iowa State Cyclones 22 to 3. Fourth quarter and it's 22 to 3 Iowa, but Iowa is punting the ball deep in its own territory. Iowa State needs to put the ball in the end zone, Jay. Iowa has the win though as we go to the fourth quarter. Fisher with the punt. McMillian downfield at midfield at the 45, the 40. Steps through, spins out, goes to the 34-yard line. Nice return by James McMillian. Bob Rees, a linebacker from Sioux City, made the stop. Cyclones with very good field position for Coach Jim Walden. But they are working against the wind and now working against the clock. Down 22-3. First minute of this fourth and final period. Spencer goes to the far side, slip. Peterson, a little swing out the hill. Hill breaks away. Hill gets the ball to the 25-yard line. You might call that second effort. I call it continuous effort. I agree, Jay. It was an excellent play. Just a little dump off and letting the wide receiver run with the ball. He's got him. And he's, there's that second effort. Good, good. Iowa State has to score here. 
They have their three scores down. They've got to make them up. They almost have to score on every possession from now on. Cyclones taking a lot of time getting the play in from the bench. The play clock is down to five. Look out. Three, two, one. They got a call timeout. They had trouble getting the play in. You can see it coming. Timeout. 14.02 remaining in this game. Iowa Hawkeyes 22. Iowa State Cyclones 3. Brought to you by First Star, and as you can see, Iowa starting to pull away from Iowa State in the stats department. Also on the scoreboard, it's 22 to 3. And the rain starts to fall again. Second down and two. Peterson, down he goes. Number 93 leads the way. Nelson with Gator, number 96. The two tackles coming up the middle, getting the job done, sacking the Cyclone quarterback. Peterson has rushed the ball 11 times this afternoon for only eight yards. Clock running, 13 and a half minutes remaining in this football game here in Ames. If you're just joining us, the Hawkeyes jumped out to a 17-0 lead first quarter, and they've controlled the game. They're up 22-3. Peterson on the run, down to the 20-yard line. Chris Peterson, one of his best runs of the day, but he took some punishment. We have a little play action fake here, and then the naked boot. He's just coming around, he has no blocking. His job is to outrun that defensive end, which is not too much of a problem for Peterson, and gets picks up a pretty good game. They're in scoring position. They must score to stay in this game at this point in time. Got some weather coming in, it looks like, from the southeast. Just a very light rain falling now. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Ben Harvey, number 80 in the game, is a wide receiver. Give it to Hill. No, no gain. Hill, the sophomore. He was the top returner for the Cyclones last season with an 18.9 average. Stopped that time by Gator 96. If you watch number 75, he's pulling, but he's stuffed. It's not that he didn't make his block, but he's got a defensive tackle that stuffed him into the hole and prevented the running back from getting where he needed to be. That's good defense on the part of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Second down, 11 at the 22-yard line. The Cyclones, their only score, a field goal from Ty Stewart. Patterson goes to the far sideline, the throw incomplete. Penalty marker and interference call against the tight end. He was trying to get to Paul Schulte. Now, Doug Book, number 18, had the coverage. This, uh, they were kind of scratching at one another. Is this offense or defense? Let's see. <laughs> It looks as if Iowa it believes that they've got it. Here's the little pass out toward the flag. Now well, here's another shot outside of the picture. Their little push. It's going to go against Iowa. <laughs> the penalty being marked off. Hayden Fry yelling out to his troops. The ball will be spotted at the 12-yard line. Holding defense, second down. It'll be second and one. The ball is at the 12-yard line. Hill and Patterson behind Chris Peterson. Now the officials in a discussion. You know, that's a tough situation, Jay. You know, you're up on the line. You're ready to go. You've got the play called. You want to get in the end zone, and the officials start to huddle, and the game slows down, and it kind of kills your momentum yeah, if you're an offensive player at any rate. No question. Now, something explained it. That is a first down. Oh, it is a first down. I wondered about that. Automatic first down on the holding call, at least when I played. <laughs> First down, 
And the handoff to Patterson. Patterson to the eight yard line. Leroy Smith, number eight, the right end on the tackle, help from Nelson, 93. This is something that worked for the Cyclones last week real well. Patterson up the middle, and there's not really a lot of uh, much of a hole there. There's Hawkeyes all over, but he gets a few yards on his own, which is good running on the part of Patterson. Second down. Seven for a first down, nine for a touchdown. The pitch back coming to Hill. Hill cuts it in. Not much there for him. Boy, the uh, Iowa defense strung that out nicely. Ron Gator leading the way, the senior from Marion, Iowa. Excellent job defensively. The Iowa Hawkeyes are solid. Uh, Iowa State is in a power offense. They've got their tight ends in tight. They're trying to sweep the right corner, and Iowa is cutting the corner off, making them cut back into the pursuit, and the pursuit catches up and makes the tackle. It's tough to run against the Hawkeyes inside the 10-yard line. Now third and five coming up. Spencer goes to the left side. They put Hughes in the slot over there. The tight end comes around to the right side. Peterson looking, throwing, touchdown! The catch of beauty by Chris Spencer, the junior from Omaha. He cut in front of Scott Blake, number six. And the first touchdown of the game, here it is for the Cyclones. Jay, this is probably the best play that the Iowa State has had all day, and what a perfect time for them to have it come. His, the, the man's wide open, cutting across the end zone. Pass protection was outstanding that time. That's what made Pedersen have the time or the ability to get the touchdown. And they're... Try for the extra point. Ty Stewart. Out of the hold of John Schnoor. And it is up. And it is good. Let's take ten a minutes. second look, Jay. Yep, 10.26 left. 22 to 10. Here's a ground level shot. Offensive protection was great. Man is wide open. Great touchdown for Iowa State. We'll be back right after these messages. More than two quarters, but they're probably not going to let Iowa State uh, get rid of that first quarter. So it's Iowa 22, Iowa State 10, but the Cyclones have a touchdown on the board. The Hawks were up 17 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. 22 to 10, the Hawkeyes 10 26 remaining, getting very dark here. We had been told that another line of thunderstorms were headed our way. Cyclones will kick off. A short kick against this win. Fair catch called for and taken in by Alan Cross. And Cross hit downfield and a penalty marker goes down. Number 13, Andrew Bugs. And now they got a little bit of shoving and Tempers flaring just a little bit. You hate to see that, Jay, happen, but it does. They get so involved and so hyped up to make the big hit or the big play. Well, and sometimes they don't see that fair catch call for, especially in that situation where it was a short kick and everybody's kind of grouped together there. Yeah, that's, that is difficult. Usually when the ball's coming down, somebody needs to get down there, look, and call the rest of the people off and that's allow right. him to make that fair catch. That was a tight end. One of the upfield people that took that short catch. Alan Cross, the junior from San Diego. Oh, the penalty is going to put the ball up at the 46-yard line. Cyclones with excellent field position as Matt Rogers returns to the field. Third in career passing at Iowa. 4,618 yards coming into today. Play action. 
action. Rogers going long, has Hughes. Hughes can't make the catch. What a play by Kevin Lazard, 33. Hughes had a step on Lazard. Lazard was able to close on him and get the hand up. Oh, Jay, this is unbelievable. First of all, I did. I was surprised that Iowa was going to pass in this particular position. And as you said, he had a step on him, but Lazard comes up, breaks it up with one heck of a defensive play. That was great. And we have a penalty on the play indicated against Iowa. Here you see it from another angle. Nice camera work. Lazard gets his hand in there and breaks up the pass. Otherwise, another six for the Hawks. There was illegal motion on the play. It's been refused. That would have been a backbreaker if they scored the touchdown. Hayden Fry throwing the ball on first down there. The surprise factor. Now, Lampkin, 33, and Montgomery, the two big backs in there, 34 and 33. Montgomery. Montgomery. Booming his way to midfield. Dan Watkins, 41, knocked him out of bounds. He's a junior out of Chicago, Illinois. He was hurt much of 90, had a tendon injury in his hand. Watkins come over to make this play, but this guy is tough, Montgomery. Runs to the short side of the field, pursuits pretty good. They get him corralled up against the sidelines, and there's no place to go but out of bounds. Third and six. Cyclone fans urging the defense to get the football back. Matt Rogers throwing wide open. Whitaker, the tight end. Well, they, somebody made a mistake in that zone that time. Penalty marker down. On the far side, it looked like he got by Kevin Fulton. Fulton just didn't cover in that zone over there. Yeah, they. I think they were in a zone, and he beat them into that zone. The guy couldn't catch up, and, I mean, you can see there's 10, 15 yards around him. I mean, it was no contest. Well, whether they were in zone or man, I'm not sure of, but it doesn't make any difference. Five yards. Five-yard penalty against the Cyclone space mask. Inadvertent fate ma face mask call. Only a five-yarder. There it is. Great camera work by our crew here. Ball at the 19-yard line. Ten minutes remaining. 22 to 10. Hawkeyes. the middle Montgomery penalty marker goes down the ball pops out Cyclones say they've got the football but that's not going to be the case there was a penalty and the ball had been whistled dead before it squirted out of there Watkins 41 on the tackle all of a sudden we're getting a lot of penalties in a very short period of time a lot of key mistakes there, he's raking that ball, or trying to rake it, and... That was Rayburg trying to do that. Yeah, it's... The play is dead before it bounces loose. He's down, and, and the, uh, obviously the play is dead. Jerry Hendrickson. Tell us about it. Turns his mic on. Defense. Repeat the down. Holding. Put the ball back at the 29-yard line. This is early in the season, Jay, and there's been a lot of mistakes by both clubs. Uh, that one just kind of put Iowa back a little bit, so let's see how things go now. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Trying to get it over to Saunders, 32, and the outside linebacker, Nitsche, Got a hand on it, almost came away with it. Starting to rain again. Well, it's kind of funny. The, quarter, or the linebackers don't get their hands on the ball that much. He was lucky to get his hands in there, break it up. Saunders doesn't get the reception. Pretty good defensive play by Nitsche to stay up with that uh, offensive back. Second down and 20. 9.36 remaining. Hawkeyes lead at 22 to 10. Rod 
Rogers throws, penalty marker down. Whitaker again, downfield. He is in for the score, but they may bring it back. But we've seen Whitaker wide open on both sides of the field here in the last minute. What they're doing, Jay, and we may get to see it in replay here, I don't know. Um, they're in, the, Iowa State's in a zone, and they're throwing that ball in the underside of the zone, underneath the zone. They'll wait for this call. Hayden Fry out on the field. Oh. Touchdown, Iowa. Holding against Iowa State. Okay, we'll look at it in replay here. You'll see they're sending the, the uh, man across underneath the zone. He's wide open because the zone coverage has fallen back to the end zone, and now it's just a matter of Whitaker getting in the end zone. Good block there, and he hurdles into the end zone. Great effort, great play by the Hawkeyes. I think we've got a replay that shows the hold against Matt Nitsche. We'll show it to you if we can after this try for the extra point. Jeff Skillet puts it up. It is good. Now let's take a look here. Arlen, the left side of the screen. Watch Nitsche, number 45. You may, well, he'll get out of there. There's Whitaker's reception. And you're seeing it ground level as he's coming towards you into the end zone, up and over. Now, we didn't have the holding call, but it came against Nitsche. The reins roll down. We'll be back. It was headed our way, and it has arrived. And it sent a lot of Iowa and Iowa State fans headed for coverage. You folks hopefully are high and dry at home. 29-10, the Hawkeyes. I think, you know, the one, one thing, Jay, with the artificial turf, it takes one aspect out of the game. Uh, when I played here at Iowa State, we played on natural turf, and when it started to rain, it was always to our advantage because we were used to playing on it. This kind of equals it up. Everybody pretty much now has artificial turf, and both Iowa and Iowa State play on it, so it shouldn't be too tough for them. We asked uh, Coach Walden if they were considering maybe going to grass back in this stadium. He said, well, we kind of like to do it, but the floor of this stadium is below the water table, and they'd have to go with one of the prescription turfs and uh, redo it. It would be a tremendous cost. Hill and Ridley back, and this won't be returned. Well, the scoring drive was five plays, 53 yards. Rodgers to Whitaker, a 29-yard touchdown pass. Let's check in with John Campbell. Hey, Moses Santos came out in the street clothes after halftime. He will not play in this game, obviously. The doctor said he nicked up a knee a little bit. They just don't want to take a chance. Nothing serious, but Moses Santos in street clothes. Rod, let's go to you. Well, over here on the Iowa State sideline side now, with only 9.30 to play, the Cyclones obviously have to get in the end zone in a hurry. Chris Peterson company trying to set up. They're obviously going to have to throw the ball, guys. All right, Rod, hold on to that umbrella. <laughs> wow, look at that. Hill got the football, and he got stuck by Ron Gator. Gator and Nelson have been brilliant this afternoon. That was, uh, that was Holmes that carried the ball that time, 22. And uh, Gator is from Marion, Iowa. Not too far away from here. Of course, you're not too far away from any place in Iowa. Everybody knows everybody out here, and everybody enjoys this football game. It is a special Saturday afternoon when the Hawkeyes and the Cyclones get together. Well, the rain is let up. Peterson on the run. Out of bounds. Pressure from Lance Keller, 75 on the play. Or I shouldn't say pressure. Keller helping to do a good job on the blocking. Leroy Smith made the tackle. Let's see Watch here. number 75 yeah, right Keller. there. Ooh. That is a big time block. It's one of those things where he peels back. That's on purpose. He peels back and picks up anybody that's pursuing the quarterback from behind. And it worked well for him. They, they uh, got a few yards on it. How big time was it? 200 
336 pounds, big time. No, 300. 336, I mean. <laughs> he is big. But these big linemen are very athletic for the Cyclones. Third and 11. Peterson on the quarterback draw. Not much there for him. He almost got a penalty that time. He only had one second left on the play clock. And again, he's beginning to kind of scramble for his life, Jay. Uh, Larry Blue made the tackle 95, and Matt Schnoor on to do the putting. Jasper, number 83, downfield to receive the punt. And Schnoor's punting against the win. The Hawkeyes should have very fine field position once again. He's just going to let it hit. Yeah. That wind is very, very tough to punt against. A very short punt at this point in the proceedings. We'll take a timeout with 7.42 remaining. 29-10, Iowa. From making it nine in a row. In the backfield now for Hayden, High, Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes. We wanted to find out today. Hayden told us about some of his second liners. He's got Kuyaba and Lampkin in there with Matt Rogers. Lampkin, the ball Matt carrier. Lampkin, the junior running the football. He had one stretch there in the first half where he really did an excellent job. Grub 93 and Radigan 46 on the tackle. Ball spotted down at the 32-yard line. In case you're just joining us, the big feature here for the Hawkeyes was a 17-point first quarter. They led 17 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, never headed. Cyclones have played them on a pretty even keel since that point. Second and seven, 32-yard line. Kuyaba. Kuyaba cracks to the 25-yard line, about a yard and a half short of the first down. Kuyaba from Cudahy, Wisconsin, the junior. You see on replay here, you're going to see a great hit. A good run, obviously, by Kuyaba. But Dubuava comes in and really makes a nice stick. Well, I get that's a lot of yabas and yabas, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Jim Walden. 0-4 against Hayden Fry in Iowa. Outscored 134-68 to coming into today. And again, he said, it's not a rivalry until we win. Well, in his mind, it won't be a rivalry until possibly next year. The officials, this Big, eight, uh, big Ten crew, offside indicated against the Cyclones. Well, while we have an opportunity, let's talk Offside. about next week. Defense. Next week, the Cyclones are at Wisconsin. And the Hawkeyes get Northern Illinois. But I imagine they'll begin to be thinking, and Hayden Fry will try to stop them from thinking about it, but there's no help. October the 5th, they get Michigan at Kinnick Stadium. Hawkeyes have scored in both their games this season on block punts. And, uh, you know, Coach Walden told us he didn't want to lose the kicking game today. I'm afraid he has. That's Lampkin stopped by Dan Milner. Milner's had a fine game today. Clock running down to five and a half minutes remaining. Well, I'm sure Jim Walden and his staff will be thinking with this young Cyclone team what might have been had they not gotten in that deep hole in the first quarter. The turnovers hurt them. Getting behind early hurt them. Hayden Fry, on the other hand, he's happy to come to Ames and get out of town. <laughs> Second and seven at the 19. Lampkin wrapped up. 
And Grubb made the tackle. Matt Grubb, number 93, from Indianola. I'll tell you, the fight hasn't gone out of the Cyclones, even though they are behind. They're playing good, aggressive defense. Walden has got to be pleased with the effort by his club. They didn't lay down when they're down 17 to nothing. They're still hitting as hard as ever there. Well, you know, the one thing I said earlier, Jay, Jay is the defense for Iowa State hasn't played a bad game. No, they haven't. But the mistakes have put them in precarious position. Yeah, Iowa State gave up the ball a couple of times, gave the Hawkeyes great field position. Kuyama, Kuyama down to the 14-yard line. Clock running down near the four-minute mark. Grubb, 93, Radigan, 46 on the tackle. You want to see why Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks in the country? Look at that disguise. If you were looking at it from the other side, you might not know who had the ball, and that's the object. The Hawkeyes piled up 467 yards against Hawaii. Fourth down and three. Anthony Dean, 86, in at a wide receiver. Three and a half minutes to play. Rogers on the and Rogers holding on, getting very close to the first down. He did get it, I believe. Rogers with a nice move. Milner, 58, leading the way, but Rogers gets the first down, and the clock continues to run. Okay, you'll, you'll see Rodgers just pull out of their spin, and he's headed for that corner. He's going to force the defense to make the play on him. You know, the one big difference between pro football and college is college, you don't have as many good players, so they add the dimension of the running quarterback. And you just saw one of the best. Well, I may have spoken too soon. They're going to measure. They've stopped the clock to measure. It is a first down. Ball at the 11-yard line. Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes will head back to Iowa City with a 2-0 record. The Cyclones will go to 1-1. One one. The Hawkeyes have not lost the second game of their season since 1984 when they dropped a 20-17 loss to Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittany Lions. Coach Paterno apparently loaded again up in the hills of Pennsylvania this year. Lampkin up the middle. Inside the five, down to the three. Well, Lampkin is a good-looking junior. He is only 5'9", built close to the ground, but very powerful. Good play. He's going to run right at you. Put yourself in the position of number 29. How'd you like to take that hit? Well, if I'm 29, I'd like to be a little bigger than 5'11", 170, and only a freshman from Houston, Texas. That's Cedric Linwood. That he stuck his nose in there and made the play. Second down, goal to go at the two. Guyaba, penalty marker down. Touchdown is indicated, but let's see what the flag was. We've got a view of it right along the sideline, but let's see what the call is. Just a straight dive play, hand, hand off, and he's going to jump for that end zone. It's going to be a hold, though, against Iowa. Wipe out the touchdown. Aiden Fry, a bit upset by that call. It's going to put his club back out at the 12. Offense. He beat it down. Actually, they spot the ball at the 13-yard line. 217 remaining. Hawks lead at 29 to 10. yard line got inside the 10 it appeared Dan Milner making the stop yes well I 
get the opportunity. I want to thank our buddies on the sideline this afternoon. Rod Bodhold for Iowa State and John Campbell for Iowa. Great to have you fellows with us. And thanks, too, to our entire support crew here this afternoon in Ames for a splendid job. Ball just inside the 10-yard line with a minute and a half to play. Hawks leading 29 to 10. Kuyama. Kuyama, the ball Kuyama still on his feet. Boy, he wouldn't quit. A determined effort by Kuyaba. He got inside the two-yard line before he was knocked out of there by Cedric Linwood, number 29. He's a runner, Jay. There's no question about it. He's got a nose for the end zone. A little misdirection. He fakes going to the right side, comes back with Kuyaba to the left side, and then he does the rest on his own. Going to be fourth down and one. The ball just inside the two-yard line. They can get a first down without getting the touchdown. Well, there's got to be a lot of popping along that line here. And I'm going to Lampkin. And batted away. Dan Watkins, number 41, making the play. Here it is. This is a great play. First of all, by the Hawkeyes, nobody knows where the ball is. Look at that fake. He jumps even to disguise it. Now he's headed for the end zone. Naked. He's going to throw, and what a play. I thought Kuyava had the ball. He did. Hey, I guarantee yeah. he fooled me. Well, we'll tell you now our pioneer players of the game. For the Iowa Hawkeyes, the player of the game is Mike Saunders. And Marvin Lampkin's picture was up there, so maybe we'll both go along with that. We'll give them both the player of the game. Now let's try the Cyclones pioneer player of the game, Mark DeBrava. There he is, the fellow from Irwindale. Here's Patterson carrying the football out to the three-yard line. We come into the final moment of this one. Arlen, good being with you here this afternoon. It's been a pleasure. Today. It was uh, really an uphill battle for the Cyclones once that first period came to an end and they were down 17 to nothing. There is Mike Saunders, our player of the game out of Milton, Wisconsin. But uh, all in all, uh, this football game, I think, will stand both these clubs in, in good stead. Uh, it would appear that the Hawkeyes have a bit of a breather next week and then face Michigan. This is Patterson. Patterson fumbled at the 22, but they say he was down. Stop made by Gary Clark, number 19. And, of course, uh, the Cyclones going to Wisconsin next week as you look at the folks who have brought you the sights and sounds of this interstate rivalry this afternoon. As the rain begins to fall once more, it has been a bit of a dampening afternoon for the Cyclones and their fans. 54,000 came to see it. You were able to watch it at home, and these were the people that helped to bring it to you this afternoon, and our thanks to our entire crew. Come down to 10 seconds. And Keith, uh, great having you here this afternoon to handle our host chores. Thank you, as Peterson. Carries the ball up to the 30-yard line, and that is it. Here at Cyclone Stadium, Jack Trice Field, the Iowa Hawkeyes have won their ninth consecutive game over the Cyclones, the final. Iowa 29, Iowa State 10. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a few moments.